Hi everyone, Josh here. I hope you're all doing well. So I'm bringing you today a slightly different type of video from usual. Um, this is actually an interview with someone that uh, some of you guys might be familiar with if you're part of my Arbitrage Insiders community. If you're not, you might not be. You might have seen him um, uh, participate in some of the other Amazon related Facebook groups. But anyway, today I'm interviewing none other than Rob Dallas, who uh, has a really impressive, inspiring story to tell. Um, I'm talking to him about his journey since he got started in uh, August of um, or summer of 2020 during the lockdown. Uh, in fact, Rob's story, I'll, I'll let you, I'll let Rob uh, get into detail on it, but uh, just so that you know, this is going to be worth your time uh, watching and listening to. Rob started off with a £5,000 credit card limit in August of 2020, and uh, it's now September 2022, and Rob's on track to uh, surpass half a million in sales in, uh, in, in, in this calendar year which I think you'll agree is absolutely incredible. So um, without further ado, let's get into the interview with Rob. I think you're really going to enjoy this. Let me know what you think, guys. All right. So hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, today's video. So today we have a very special treat. We have got uh, Rob Dallas on the line with us, um, who has very kindly uh, given us some of his time today to have a chat about uh, his experience as an Amazon seller. And basically, just to find out a little bit more about uh, Rob, his business, uh, how he's done what he's done, uh, what sort of results he's gotten, and uh, what his plans are for the future. So welcome, Rob. Thank you very Thank much. You thanks for, very thanks much. for having me. No, you're more than welcome. Thank you for taking time out of your day. I know it's, you're a busy guy and you've got things going on. And to take time out to do something like this, I do, uh, I do appreciate it. So um, just, uh, just quickly, give us a a quick intro obviously we know who you are now but uh what uh who you are what you've been up to and sort of um going back to when you got started selling on amazon uh so i have been selling for uh just over two years now um and started really uh, it, it was purely by accident um to, to 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 start at the beginning um it was lockdown 2020 in the summer um Lidl uh, had just opened in Staines and um, we'd bored, been stuck at home for, for three months. Uh, me and my daughter uh, took a walk over to Lidl to have a look down the mid aisle. I'd never been in a Lidl before um, or knew what it was about um, and uh, saw quite quite a lot in it, down the mid aisle. There was these um, electric scooters, inflatable kayaks, um, uh, sort of ridiculously cheap price um uh, and just took a, a decision there and then to to buy a load of it and and resell it um with sort of little or or no research done um we you know come back got the car um because it's only around the corner from us and and loaded up the car to the brim with um yeah electric scooters and inflatable kayaks um made a quick call to a friend of mine who does a bit of buying and selling um, and he took the kayaks sort of off me straight away. He didn't even drive home. I, I drove to his house, dropped them off, um, and nearly sort of tripled my money. Um, wow. And then listed all the electric scooters on um, Facebook, and they sold that day. So in within sort of twenty four hours, I made like a thousand pounds in profit. Amazing. Um, couldn't believe it. Really, sort of couldn't believe it. My daughter couldn't believe it um, either. And people were turning up to the house and, and buying these electric scooters. And um, so I started looking into, you know, can people buy from retailers and sell online? Is it a thing? I didn't know if it was a thing or, or what. Um, started looking online. And then, like always with Facebook, it's always watching. I was getting sort of Amazon FBA adverts and um, started looking into FBA, fulfilled by Amazon, didn't know what it was. Um and yeah, sort of spent a lot of time, I'd probably say the next sort of couple of months researching the, the whole thing. I, it, so going back before that, I wasn't happy in my current job anyway, um, before lockdown. Um, I was sort of looking for another job at the time. Um, it was a family run business, just super stressful. I was wearing many, many hats. Um, and yeah, so I started looking on to, to buying and selling online and was it a thing? Um, got sort of sucked into the, the private label side for a little while I downloaded Jungle Scout and I was following their course for about a month um, and then watched another YouTube video of um, 
someone going into retail stores, buying it and, and selling it on Amazon. So I was like, this is what I want to do. I was like, I want to import stuff from China and all this sort of stuff. Um, so I thought, well, I'm just going to go for it. I need an Amazon seller's account and Bybot Pro. I could tell from the videos. Didn't know anything else. That, that was it. So got it, started looking, gated on everything. Gated, searched for like a week, couldn't find anything to buy, gated. And um, I put a message in the, the Bybot Pro group um about being gated and this the lady messaged me alison uh who's in our group um okay. and she was like look i know you struggle um I, i done a course she recommended your course and i was like oh, i don't want to spend the course is she just you know trying to earn some money out of me i don't know but she um we had a mutual friend on facebook my auntie and i thought well my auntie's quite well to do she's no you know not gonna um know someone i don't know who's gonna you know try and sell me something that's tough uh recommended your course and i was i must admit I, you know i was hesitant uh to buy into a course um and do i really need it and then uh I, i chatted to allison for a few days after via messenger and it, you just realized i didn't know anything about amazon so i yeah, got the seller account got by pro i didn't know what to look for how to look didn't understand sales ranks then um Uh, I didn't know the ungating process, didn't know about barcoding goods, sending it into Amazon, how to send it into Amazon. Um, so, yeah, took, took the plunge, watched the, the webinar um, and, and got on the course. And, yeah, best thing I've ever done. It's just, you know, I'm sure you can learn it on YouTube. But as you know, there's a lot of misinformation on YouTube and you've got to piece together the, the sort of, naff stuff with the correct stuff and you'd make a lot of expensive mistakes um everyone has their own sort of agenda selling on youtube for some reason um so yeah the course fast track you know started getting ungated and everything really really quickly spent a lot of time getting ungated uh started finding stock a lot easier um and and yeah that that was it for me that's how i how i started and, and got into it so really it, it was purely by accident um being in lockdown and a, a, a little opening in stains was <laughs> well, it's crazy how these it. things happen isn't it yes yeah amazing so, yeah oh. I haven't looked back ever since awesome so like uh you, you talked about having looked at private label and then having stumbled across online and retail arbitrage what was it that specifically appealed to you about those models versus sort of importing um for one the, the data that's available as well using buybot pro and stuff like that so you you know you scan in sales ranks you scan stuff in you can see if it's going to sell or not um private label you know it's a risk you're going you got to create listings you, you don't know if it's going to sell you need to become like a pay-per-click wizard um but you know walking into your local retail store buying something for a tenner and selling it for 30 you know what, what's not to love yeah for me I've, i've done private label myself i still do private label but it's uh the uh, the online and retail arbitrage stuff for me is so much more thrilling it's the the, the thrill of the hunt and like you say the thrill of the chase yes can can be a little bit stronger and um yeah whilst it, it's it's got its drawbacks uh, and, and private label has some 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 things up on that that, that there's uh, there's a lot of pros um that do outweigh do, do outweigh it back the other way and i think it's a great place i like um all the strategies they work and they work great but for someone who's just getting started online and retail arbitrage is a great way to get to, to grips with the amazon ecosystem understand how amazon operates and like you said learn a lot about the fundamentals as far as sales ranks concerned and definitely what, yeah what definitely. sells what doesn't i mean i'm not saying private labels out the window in the future it, you know it could happen um But yeah, at the moment, just a, a lot away yeah. and our way. It's, is... it's a different ball game, isn't it? And, and yeah. uh, I think um, one of the things, one of the reasons I, I was keen to, to talk to you is uh, you're someone who has done incredibly well in a, you know, a relatively short space of time in the scheme of things. Um, and because a lot of people, one of their, one of their um, objections to, to getting involved with online and retail arbitrage is that it's not scalable. But you know, your your results would would say other. Yeah, I, yeah, I disagree. It's completely completely scalable, 
completely outsourceable if you want it's it's yeah it's it's a it's a great model for me you know i as i said i wasn't happy in my job um so i, I was determined to to make it work I was doing you know long hours up early in the morning sourcing uh, in the evening coming from work spend time with the kids something to eat once they're in bed working every night you know till 11 12 one o'clock in the morning um trying to source deals and i just had that uh you know determination to not be stuck in a, a, a in a job really um yeah. not only that it's, it's the freedom it gives you the you know the come and go type attitude if you know if i don't want to work like you know six weeks holiday the kids are off can come and go when i please you know not stuck in one place nine till five every day um so it's definitely the freedom, really. And I'd say at the moment, really, for me, the freedom outweighs more the, than the money. Yeah, definitely. I've, I've had that same realisation in my own business life. I spent well, however long at the beginning chasing the money. Uh, and then when the money eventually started to arrive, I realised that, you know, the money doesn't mean anything. Uh, it's that, that, that's inconsequential. It's the freedom that the money has been able to afford me as yes. a result of what I've been doing completely so agree would you completely agree that agree. Uh, uh, you could label um online retail arbitrage like a lifestyle business then would you yes definitely yeah. definitely yeah 100 percent. 100 glad you're getting it's been my thinking because <laughs> uh, it's one of those things i think when people first get started it can be a little overwhelming because there's, there's there's a few sort of cogs few, few things to learn few things to kind of get your head around at first and there are people that um that i've worked with over the years that have been like this, this looks amazing but I've just had a look at, the, at, at some training and I'm a little overwhelmed and therefore I think this is not going to be for me. But it's like that once you get over the peak, that uphill climb um, yes, and you get your first few shipments in and you make you make a few mistakes because regardless, uh, uh, I think you, you probably agree, but training or no training, help or no help, mentor or no mentor, like, or we go, you're going to make mistakes, whatever happens. Yes. Um, but you quickly learn from those mistakes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Especially the expensive ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always going to happen. It's always going to happen yeah, in business. But, uh, for sure. It's how so, you learn. Uh, it's how you yeah, learn. Absolutely. It's the path. Uh, fa well, failure, I, don't, I hesitate to use the word failure, but some people consider it failure. But, you know, failing at something or, or, or losing at something is part of the journey to success, isn't it? I mean, definitely. Definitely. One of the uh, examples used regularly is of, of children or toddlers babies don't go from crawling to walking without falling over a few times exactly that sense. exactly that so uh i gather you are now a 100 full-time amazon seller uh, um well no no i still do uh two days a week at the furnace shop because it's uh it's a family business um right. it's open seven days a week so mm -hmm. if i'm not there uh my father-in-law would be on his own and the, the shop would have to close. So I still do two days a week. Uh, I've stepped back from a lot of positions that I was doing. Um, so when you're doing sort of five or six different hats in one business, it's very, very stressful. You spread yourself very thin. Um, so yeah, it took a step back, gone down to, to, to part-time, two days a week, um, zero stress. Um, so it's, it's a good balance at the moment um, till he decides what he wants to do with the shop, um, whether he wants to sort of sell or, or carry on. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's not going to be forever for me. It's, it's just, it's purely to help out at yeah. the moment, purely to help no, out. I understand that. I've got a, a background in family business as well. And uh, honestly, if it wasn't for the fact that my family business, uh, unfortunately came to an untimely end in 2015, I'd, I'd probably <laughs> still be, uh, still be um drafted in to, to to do some stuff too so i'll be putting a shift in yeah exactly yeah 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 uh, definitely so do you mind uh sharing some some numbers sort of what what uh, what you've been able to achieve in terms of sales over your uh, over your journey um yeah 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 what what, what bit do you want to know <laughs> um i mean i guess um whatever you're whatever you're prepared to share, to share with respect whatever you're prepared to share like what, what revenue have you um, done, first of all, over that period of time? Or what, what sort of sales are you, are you talking? Uh, so we on target to, to go just over um, over half a million pounds this year. Um, so, yeah, depending on what Q4 is going to be like, uh, 
which I think is going to be good. It always is. Yeah, um, for sure. So, you know, if, if it's really good, you know, we, we could be hitting about 600,000 this year in turnover um, for our second, so it'll be our second full year of Amazing. trading. Uh, not That's bad. Incredible. So we only started with 5,000 pounds. Well, that so, was a question I was going to ask as well, actually, because I remember you talking about this uh, in, our, in our private group. Um, that people were sort of asking what, what sort of uh, what sort of money can you get started with and, and if I remember rightly it was a it, you said it was a, a credit card balance that you used so yes so you know uh, I don't like using my own money you know I like to use other no. people's money you know, <laughs> as it um, we'd gone on uh, just before COVID hit we'd gone on uh, a, a cruise the year before Mm-hmm. and um it was about five grand for this cruise and again you know i didn't want to use my own money it's nothing worse mm-hmm. than seeing a big chunk coming out of the, the, the bottom of your, <laughs> no. your bank balance um and uh so someone had recommended about um uh, interest-free credit cards so um I, I applied for one got it um gave me a ten thousand pound limit two years interest-free so nice. um spent the five grand on the cruise so i had five grand left on this credit card um and i thought well i might as well use somebody else's money to start buying the stock um and yeah that's what i did um just kept kept turning it over turning it over i mean even to this day um the only good thing that helps with working at the shop uh, a couple of days a week my partner working full time so i haven't taken any money out of the business Mm -hmm. um I because I don't I don't really need it. I just keep reinvesting it and and keep spending yeah. it as as fast as I can. Um, the only thing I bought was a, a number plate for my two year oh, anniversary. Yes. I yes. saw the number; it's amazing. Uh, FBA, yeah. FBA. Um, Excellent. So yeah, that's 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 the only thing I've I've really bought myself. The odd you know box of Lego falls on my desk now and then. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be done. Yes. Another Lego set. So. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Um, just yeah. I've I've kept reinvesting it. Fortunate enough that I yeah don't need to take any money from it, and I, I just keep reinvesting it, reinvesting it, reinvesting it. And yeah. Mm-hmm. So hopefully, hopefully we'll we'll well we'll definitely hit over half a million pound this year. If we hit six hundred thousand, it'll be amazing. Um, and uh, working less hours because of it as well. Just keep trying to outsource. Mm. Um, every time we have sort of too much money, um, we uh, take on another VA um so, so yeah you, just, we, just keep growing just to tap in what you said there so so i'm clear when you say uh, you, too much money is in you need more team members to be able to go out there and find deals to spend the money is that uh, to yes invest in stock yeah so I, I don't like uh money sitting in the bank really no, and i've said this to people before anything, and they're like what what you know you're crazy <laughs> But, you know, Amazon's a numbers game. You know, mm. the more you buy, the more you sell. Money sitting in the bank isn't going to do anything. Um, so, um, yeah, if, if I have sort of excess money for any period of time, we obviously can't spend it. You know, I'll, I'll increase the team um, and, uh, and, and try and spend it. Just keep, keep, keep the bank balance low. <laughs> I think it's a very uh, a very commendable approach to it because, like I said, there's a lot of people would have quite a bit of fear attached to, to, to doing that, not having money in the bank. I think uh, unless you're used to um, that kind of uh, that kind of attitude, then you might be more inclined to want to have some sort of safety net. But uh, like you said, I, I found it to be the exact same way. And uh, in fact, over the years of being a full time seller, one of the things that sort of hindered my growth. Um, at, at various stages was because I was living on my business. I was living on my Amazon business, which uh, slowed the growth for a period of time because as soon as you start taking money out of it, you start to, you, you take, you, you, well, cash flow is a life, uh, lifeblood of a business. And as soon as you start removing that, um, you, there are opportunities that come up that you can't then take advantage of. So yeah, yeah, it's um, definitely uh, advisable for as long as you possibly can to, to yeah reinvest. so uh, yeah oh yeah you know I'll, I'll keep doing it and, and keep going uh, until it comes to a point that I'll, I'll need to it but I, you know i like it compounding and and you mm. know keep growing um so yeah i'll keep going so as long all as the I can. while that your your inventory uh size is growing and growing and growing um yes so you've got, you've got yeah. bigger stock holdings like you say the more more stock you have the more the more you'll sell yeah it just keeps keeps growing um and you know going back to the you know the, the basic training from the course is uh spread your inventory far and wide you know mm. never go too deep into 
to any one product really. Uh, there are there are sort of two products I, I tend to go deep in now, but I have been selling them consistently um, for over a year. Um, yeah. And it's, it's, it's actually a good listing. And it's about really, one of them is just, it's about reading and understanding the, the data on it. It's a listing that Amazon comes on and off regularly that I think a lot of people avoid. Um, but, you know, looking at the data, I can see Amazon uh, come off the listing sort of once or twice a month, just two or right. three days, literally two or three days. But in them two or three days, I can sell 50 a day of, wow. of the item. Um, so and yeah, there's like nearly ten pound profit per item. Um, so it's it's a, it's an item that is is quite gated as well. Um, it, it was difficult one to get ungated, um, and yeah, Amazon scare. I think a lot of people off off the listing, but yeah, mm. deep dive into the into the data into Keeper. Um, yeah. you know, take a risk, um, and then it, it, it you know didn't buy many to start with they sold really quick you know you buy five and you buy 10 and i was buying 20 and you know now i'm buying 200 at a time um so still not going too deep because that yeah. you know then 200 as soon as them come off they can they sell straight away mm-hmm. um but sometimes i have to be prepared to sit on them for for a month till amazon come off again so yeah. it's, it's it's you know it's just a risk that yeah i think that's important as well with. Yeah, you learn to sort of manage your emotions. Sometimes it's it's like being into uh, into an investment, uh, I, I, crypto. I've had some crypto investments over the years, and sometimes uh, have, uh, have have made some bad selling decisions because I, I I got emotional about the investment. I saw things were happening, and I see the exact same mistake being made by Amazon sellers all over the place. Um, you see the conversations happening in in other Facebook groups where people will say, "Oh, Amazon are on the listing now, therefore I'm just going to." liquidate my my stock and sell it off or there's so many new sellers on there but um it sounds like you have a, a similar you've had a similar experience to me and if you uh, wait it out uh more often than not that buy box is coming back round to you yeah. you don't have don't have to be the cheapest to secure that buy box um, definitely i mean i see some comments in some groups where people are, if amazon is on the listing avoid like yeah. I think that's madness <laughs> you're you know leaving money on the table absolutely madness and- it's and fun. in today's Amazon world, to find a listing that Amazon isn't on or doesn't come on at some point, it's, 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 it's challenging. Very, yeah, very, very, very. And you know, the thing about that advice as well is because that is, and I don't know about you, but I've always been one to kind of see which way the crowd is walking and I'll walk there the other way. So Because if you've got everybody who's listening and adhering to that advice, all of a sudden you've got the majority all bundling onto the, the minority of listings. Yes. Your competition yes. is vastly increased. Yeah. yeah, yeah which yeah. is why uh, I think the ungating side of things that as a community we've made a, a study uh, is important because, um, again, when, when people first come in and I, I've got my little deal uh, service where we find deals for people and, and one of the uh, complaints that we get more regularly than any other is that, well, a lot of the deals on your list are actually gated. And uh, we've decided that, Actually, we, we quite like that um, because one of the besides that, the biggest complaint that deal services get is that my, my listings just got tanked. And it's because most deal services focus on ungated deals, which is what the majority yes. of sellers will go for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of think people, especially new sellers, make the mistake as well with, with deal sheets of solely buying the thing that's on the deal sheet. You know, mm-hmm. Yeah. When I first started, uh, you know, I used deal, deal sheets, deal services, um, and it would take me to stores that I'd never heard of. Mm-hmm. And you start searching that store or variation of the, the, the product that's already been found. And then that's mm-hmm. how you find more deals. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, don't solely focus on the product that's been found. You know, focus on the store that you've never heard of. Um, and uh, and variation products or other products or other sale items that are at that store, so that's yeah you know what it's really good advice. Yeah, um, like and replanning, replanning, a lot of things that end up on a deal sheet. People never replan. Always go back. Uh, I've, I've go got back. a few people who I know uh, who've been uh, customers since, since day one, and uh, those people that I'm aware of are printing uh, the, the the sheet every day and uh, like recording what's what's done well for them in the past and they've gotten a, a number of re- uh, replens from that so it's it's good to know 
yeah. um, because it, it can be kind of a churn and burn otherwise, and you're constantly having to look for new things, which is one of the challenges that uh, inside behind the scenes that one of the challenges that running a deal service we had because we we kind of can't keep given the same products we have to find a new product every day <laughs> eventually they're going to yes. run out you know? <laughs> yes 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 but, yes yeah um, so replays from many, a, many from challenges a, many challenges oh, in the amazon world yeah for sure but um that's why like you say you need to be get creative and resourceful with what you've got and think outside of the box sometimes rather than um just looking at, at what you're being faced with right in front of you for sure cool um so I know we've talked about a few struggles, but what would you say has been your biggest struggle that you've overcome in your, in your Amazon business so far? Oh, um, it's a tough one, really. I mean, things change, circumstances change, you mm. know, challenges change. Um, my biggest, there's no been real one big challenge. Um, so I started when did I start sort of August September of of 2020 um and we come into to January uh 2021 um and uh, you know I'm buying loads like and I'm still working full-time at the shop um and we just got a puppy at the time and um I, I one week I'd come in every single day and there was a mountain of boxes so the missus was like I've had six couriers here today UPS have collected um and every night that week I was prepping every single night prep prep till late everything that come in getting it out the next day I got the dog jumping on me all my prep stuff was in the garage so I got to bring all this stuff in every night and um it, it was getting hard work and then I got to the end of the week realized I hadn't purchased anything uh, you know what I was saying about the bank balance so you're not buying you know you're not selling uh, so that was like a whole week I hadn't purchased um, so that, that was a challenge and someone had messaged me that they'd had uh, a space come up in their prep centre. I thought, this is the time. You know, a lot of people ask, when's the best time to get a VA? When's the best time to get a prep? Yep. When you know, you know, you know, when it's too much, you know. So, yeah, the fact that I wasn't spending any money this week, it, I needed a prep centre. So, you know, that was a, a challenge. That was one of my challenges. Um, so, yeah, went, in, went into the prep. Um, and that was like a huge weight straight off my shoulders. Really, yeah. really, really was concentrated on, on purchasing. And then, you know, as the money grows, uh, I couldn't spend it. So uh, even with a couple of deal services. Um, so then, you know, it took on a VA, um, spent a lot of time with, with, with uh, Vince. Yeah, great guy. Great guy. He's like the, the, the rock of my business at the moment. He really, really? is. He, yeah, he's Amazing. like team leader now, purchase manager um very techy like i'm really not he's very very techy four screens in front of him wow. a wizard with formulas <laughs> you know he formulated so we had like our, our purchase sheet um then we had a, a prep sheet that was linked to the prep center and then we have the uh, ultimate sourcing sheet are you familiar with the ultimate sourcing sheet yeah I've seen, um, yeah tom parkinson's one isn't it yes so yeah a couple of formulas so literally export out of bybot pro and they would all fill that was it so yeah you know tech wise time wise he's he's yeah been yeah by far my yeah i couldn't live without him really yeah couldn't live without him so i spent so, a lot of time with him in the beginning really yeah you know every deal he put through why did i buy it why didn't buy it every day went on for like three or four months every single day every morning i'd be up hour early out of bed meeting in the morning um and we just worked together and he loved to learn he loved to know he wanted to know why you know my reasons and deep dive into things uh and you know um sort of a year and a half down the line a year just over a year and a half um it's sort of really paid sort of dividends so couldn't be about yeah it. That's um, that's quite an important thing that I've found in my experience of uh, helping other people to do this. There's, there's 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 one thing to be said about you know theory and, and and do this, do that, do the other, but it's another thing to see real real live examples and, and something very particular about what you said that I found important. Uh, not only why you should buy a deal, but why you shouldn't buy a deal, why you shouldn't invest. Like um, I used to do some uh, some binary options trading many years ago. And uh, this this chap uh, he who who taught it he was a um, 
forget what you call them now. Like, uh, you know, they'll swing the watch thing. <laughs> I can't remember what you call them. A hypnotist. Hypnotist, that's it. He was a hypnotherapist. And um, he used to talk about, uh, that. that's entirely not relevant to the point, but anyway, <laughs> he, uh, he used to talk about um, taking trades. And he said, I don't look for reasons to take a trade. I look for reasons to not take a trade. And uh, I thought that was a really, really useful, a really powerful thing to say. And uh, for, for you to, to say that there brings that back to me. And it's, uh, it's probably a good piece of advice for someone who is looking, because I, I know how it can get. Sometimes you get a little overwhelmed, especially when you're starting, you're looking for deals, you're, you're trying desperately to find something. Whereas if you're, if you're more looking for reasons not to invest, um, yes. you, you might, uh, you, you're less likely to get caught out or stuck with something that, that isn't going to sell. Yeah, I mean, there was a couple of things we done. I don't know if they were different to other people, but you know, again, you you see a lot in other groups. They want a VA, they want eight deals a day, they want forty mm. percent. Oh, it's got to be this, it's got to be that. Um, and you know, for me, it, it wasn't like that. So, say early in the beginning, it was why and why we did and why we didn't buy a deal. Um, and I always used to ask him to put a quantity next to it. How many he thinks we should buy, and then ask him why he put that quantity, and it helps him understand and you know, me understand him and him understand me. If he says, you know, I think we should have bought three and I'm like, that's maybe we should have bought six and here's why. Um, and just getting him to understand that. And then another thing, it was to help determine spend. So rather than saying, I want eight deals a day, I say, I want you to spend X amount a day, like 500 pounds a day, say, yep. you know, on deals. So if he finds five of something at 20 pounds each, 100 quid spent. So, yep. you know, that's, that's, you know, it's not X amount of deals. It's we want to try and hit this spend. And, yep. you know, sometimes they do uh, and sometimes they don't. But I don't, again, I don't base it every day. I, I tend to base it over the week or the month and, and yep. work out the average spend. You know, some days they have good days, you know, where they spend double, triple their target and sometimes they'll spend half their target. So mm. it's, just, it's averaging and, and not looking too much into the minor details of the day-to-day -day stuff. But yeah. I think um, that that's again a really uh, important thing, a, a really important key part of it because I I've hired quite a few VAs uh, for Amazon over the years, and one of the things that I find is uh, when I'm interviewing them, a lot of them have worked one or two months for independent sellers who are hiring for the first time, and they never, they never last long working with them, and it's because they uh, the the sellers are making the mistake that you just pointed out, and setting them a daily um, deal requirements so you must source this other i think it's i understand why expectations is it. too much yeah yeah their expectations are too high but i think people are sitting at home you know thinking these these, these people that work for me they're generally from the philippines i, I, I hire from, uh, from the philippines I, I, you may do as well but yeah you know, being on the other side of the planet uh, not being able to get in a room with them i think some people are kind of uh, feel a little bit vulnerable and so they set these expectations so that they know they're working um whereas it's not it's, I mean, it, whilst it is a good metric to, to, to track, a better metric is, like you said, uh, spend, especially um, one of the main reasons people end up firing their VAs is because like, they get them the eight or 10 deals a day that they want, but actually they haven't got the budget to, to, to invest in those eight to 10 deals. So yes, yes. To, to instead give Pete, get to give the, the, the VA a budget, say spend when you're first getting started, I don't know, 100 pound a day or 200 pound a day or 500 pound, whatever it is, it's a much better metric to track. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's that yeah. Way, yeah. And um, yeah. And it just, again, you know, we were doing all this in the beginning. I was spending every single day with him. Um, we were putting quantities on spend. And then when it comes to the time for him to, you know, I wanted to promote him to a purchase manager. He was ready. Yeah. You know, he knew what I wanted, how many I wanted of a particular deal, why I was buying certain deals. Um yeah and again that was just another way when I was working full-time at the shop I'd have to come in the evening and make sure that I was buying and then if you know we going out that evening or doing something or something happened and I couldn't buy it you know it's frustrating um so yeah to outsource that as well again these sort of weights start lifting um and and just make life you know a lot easier and he was ready um and you know hit the floor running didn't make you know don't make purchasing mistakes um so yeah put the time in put the effort in put the hard work in put the hours in and you know you haven't got to do it forever and it will start it will start paying for itself definitely for sure well no pain no gain as they say right you have to yeah uh, definitely and, 
and to I think people are quite quick to outsource things that they haven't mastered for themselves. Uh, yes. And uh, when it comes to then critiquing someone's work, well, you're not really qualified to be able to do that because you don't understand unless you've been through that uh, that obstacle course yourself and understood it entirely. Um, it's uh, it's difficult to to then delegate that to somebody else. Yeah, definitely. And I'd, I yeah, I, I wouldn't like to delegate delegate a job to someone that I haven't done myself and know mm. the ins and outs of. Um, but you know, sourcing OA especially, I'm not very good at. Not, not, not the greatest. Um, you know, I've got Me by, either. and the less, <laughs> the less I do, the the harder it becomes. Sometimes I think, right, I'm going to do a bit of sourcing this afternoon. I've got an hour, yeah. and I sit down, look at my computer, and I think, oh, I don't really know where to start. <laughs> it takes a while to 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 get back into it. Um, but you know, like they say in business, if you know, if if you want to get ahead in business, uh, employ someone better than you. Uh, and, yeah. and say Vince and all the, the, the VAs who work for me, they're all better than me. They're all better than me. Um, yeah, and you know, uh, like you said, they should be, shouldn't they? Because uh, your, your your role in the business is 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 different. Uh, yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I asked you what, what your struggle was. It sounds to me as though you've you've come up against these these struggles in your business, and the solution that you've had that that, that, that your biggest struggles have been when you've gotten to the point where, like you said, you know uh, you, you've reached perhaps overwhelm with all that needs to be done, uh, and your solution to that has been to outsource to yes. people who can do do those things for you, so that you can focus your time and attention as the business owner on on the things that uh, are the most important, like that moving forward, growing the business and yes. uh, strat- strategizing and what have you. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Awesome. But then as I say, circumstances change. Um, as I said earlier, I, I didn't want to be in my job full time anymore, um, but also didn't want to leave them in the lurch. And I yeah. cut down to a couple of days a week. Um, my prep bill was, was sort of getting astronomical. Um, so I, I bought the prep, back come out of the prep center took a unit around the corner from my house um and uh, got a good prep's a lot easier when everything's laid out so you know i've got yeah. the boxes got the tape got the bags the, yes. the printers um and it's a safe store so they take all my deliveries for me uh, i don't have to wait in ups come and collect it from there um and i've got a good good system in place with the prep so i'm paying like a quarter of, of what i was paying um and i I do it myself at my own time when I want um, and, and doesn't really take me half as long as when I was trying to do it at home. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So. I, uh, I definitely resonate with what you said about you know, having everything laid out. You know, once upon a time, I, I'd sit and do this in front of the telly in the evening. But then it's, I'd spend half an hour getting the, the label printer out plugged in and the, the barcode scanner rigged up and the laptop set up yeah. and bags ready and all those things. Whereas if everything's just laid out, I kind of got a little setup going on behind me here that merges together with some of the other things I do but got my printer set up my uh, barcode scanner and things everything's ready yeah. so I can just sit down and get, get started working so definitely yeah. yeah definitely makes a lot of sense so uh what are your plans for the future what, where's, um, uh, where's Rob going with Amazon next you know a lot of, a lot of people talk about goals and uh, and stuff like that um with with the Amazon UK I have no real goal just mm-hmm. keep growing at the moment yeah. is just to keep growing, keep reinvesting. Be better um, than you were yesterday. Be better than I was yesterday. Yes, definitely. Um, just opened up Amazon US as well. Oh, amazing. Um, so yeah, put some money into that. Uh, that's, it, it's been a very long journey <laughs> to get going. <laughs> a lot of paperwork, a um, mm. lot of, yeah, uh, some money, some investment to, to, to get going. Um, so paperwork with the IRS you're on their time so you've got to wait for that to come back um, and uh, so the US is good in in one way but, but slow in the other so margins are definitely better out there mm-hmm. tanking isn't as much as an issue out there so that I've seen so far um, there's no VAT to pay out there no. <laughs> we're in a tax free no. state but oh, wow. shipping and lead times are, are, are so much longer so yeah. yeah, my first first sort of box of products went um, got sent. Uh, it, it took about three weeks to to check in. Uh, the box sold within two days, so that wow. was quite good. But I've still got another five boxes floating around some states in America somewhere <laughs> that, for weeks. So 
just waiting. One box has been checked in, um, but hasn't received, or so it's been received, but hasn't been checked in yet. Uh, right. And that's been there nearly a week. So the, the whole shipping process is um, is definitely longer. But, you know, I suppose as I get going and, and buying more, you know, I probably won't notice it. I mean, the UK shipments, I, I, I can tell you the last time I attracted a shipment from the UK. I just... No, we, we are definitely spoiled over here with the UK marketplace. Next day, even in some cases, same day delivery, next day delivery. Boxes so a shipment was in. picked up yesterday and two of the products have sold this morning already and they haven't even uh, they, yeah been picked up by ups and they haven't even checked in yet but yeah the us <laughs> is, is 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 long so yes. um and gated on everything like a, a, ah. a pro- like a proper newbie yeah <laughs> takes you back to two yeah, years yeah it's is it's difficult so um yeah i've taken on um a, 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 another va for the us to help out there um, Vince, my purchase manager for the UK, is is sort of guiding her uh, and doing the, the, the purchases out there as well. Um, and I'm tasked with the job of of, of, of getting ungated and uh, trying try to work that out for the US style. Um, yeah. Um, and other than that, goals, again, I'm not sure, you know, I, I spoke to you briefly about possibly maybe prepping, doing a bit mm-hmm. of prep. I like I like the prep. I like the physical moving. Um, you know, I I can't sit down for too long. You know, after this, I'll have to to, to go and walk the dog to to stretch my leg. So I'm I'm really not good at sitting down for too long. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe prep. Maybe you know, I'm not talking mass scale. I'm talk- one or two sellers possibly yeah. helps cover the costs. Um, uh, again, so that'll be more money to to, to keep investing in, into my Amazon business. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I've been well, distracted I mean, a sounds... bit in the past with a few, you know, little things, you know, a bit of affiliate marketing and then, you know, drop shipping. But, you know, my love always comes back to Amazon. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I just, you know. It's addictive for sure. There needs, to be, uh, <laughs> there needs to be a, a, a support group for, for the Amazon addicts amongst this. <laughs> definitely. You know, definitely. Yeah. Not, that it's, uh, not that it's a negative thing, but just that my, uh, well, especially when I first got started and I'm still the same now, refresh that app maybe uh, 30,000 times a day just to see what oh, it says. Oh, don't. Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it's, too, it's too much. I was thinking about getting, because I have to keep, for the US, and you have to keep logging out on my phone oh, and course, the OTP yeah. code. So I was I was thinking about getting another phone just purely for the American app. Mm. <laughs> just so I could uh um yeah keep refreshing it. We need but, like uh, a, a a home page that we can have up on a screen on the wall that's constantly logging yes. in live updates yeah. with, uh, with yeah. Yeah, but yeah, very, very addictive. Very, very addictive. But you know, it does it does uh, it can take over your life. You know, you go to Tesco's just to, to pick up some milk and you end up yeah. Scanning, scanning the toy aisle and you know it's a it's a blessing and a curse at the same time isn't it? you don't look at a retail super or a supermarket in the same way that you used to no uh, what what, t- what was once upon a time going for a few bits of bobs like you say can very quickly turn into a, a, a sourcing session accidentally <laughs> yeah and if i'm in a rush i really have to like just walk past and and and, yeah. and not look and not look. once uh, once you've been unplugged from the matrix you can't unsee the stuff you see opportunity everywhere don't you? <laughs> yeah 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 and any downtime just any you know any downtime I, you know, i'm on my phone i'm on you know facebook marketplace looking on ebay mm-hmm. looking for flips um yeah it's yeah addictive, addictive. well it, it certainly sounds like you live and breathe amazon and uh that obviously is has been a a really big part of your success and what you've been able to achieve um so i mean that's uh, hats off to you for that because it's not an easy thing to do especially you know uh, with a family i've got three three children myself and a wife i have to keep keep happy and make sure i'm yes. giving them my time and attention so <laughs> yeah time okay. time management is is yeah for me is, is definitely something i need to work better on um Perhaps that's uh, um, something we'll see from you in the future. Um, time management for Amazon sellers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> New program. Yes. So yeah. I'm conscious of a, a time here. I've, I've kept you a little while. So I've got one more question for you before we finish up. Um, and that was just what your uh, what would be one piece of advice that you would give to aspiring Amazon sellers? One thing that you think mm. would, um, would, uh, would, would make the difference to somebody. 
Um, stay consistent and think outside the box. You know, just stay consistent. You know, they're going to be good days and bad days. You know, the, the amount of times I'd in the early days I'd come in and I was, you know, sourcing in the evening and don't find any deals. I'd go to bed with the ump and you know, it, and then the next day, you know, you find loads and I've spent all my money. I've got no money left in the bank and I'm waiting for disbursements from Amazon. Um, it just stay consistent, stay consistent, keep sourcing. You know, you're not going to find massive amounts in the beginning. Um, just learn, keep, keep learning, keep stay consistent. Excellent. I think that's uh, fantastic advice. And it's, it's, um, it's clear from, from my perspective as somebody who's, who's been privileged enough to, to work with lots of different people on this and have a window into lots of people's different businesses. You see the commonalities between the people who do, you know, break through, push through and they get, I mean, success, I guess, is one of those things it's, that's relative to, to, to the person. But I think we, we, can, agree, we can all agree that um, pushing through the, those, uh, those, those barriers and, 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 and getting the kind of numbers that you've got is uh, a level of success that a lot of people would, would, be, um, would, would be pleased to, to, to achieve. So consistency is definitely uh, a key part of that. So. Consistency is key, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you ever so much, Rob, for your time today. Uh, Thanks for having me. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Uh, and um, it's been a pleasure to, to chat with you. And hopefully everyone watching will get some good golden nuggets from that they can take back and implement into their own businesses and um, yeah, get, get a good uh, ROI on their time they've been watching. Yes, hopefully. Hopefully. No, thanks, for, awesome. thanks for having me. You've uh, broken my interview cherry. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. All right. <laughs> Cheers, Rob. Speak Cheers, Josh. Soon. Thanks very much, mate. Take it easy.